Hey everybody, Dr. Adams here from Calibration Chiropractic and Functional Health and I want to talk a little bit about concussion today. This is something that is uh, near and dear to my heart because we've seen a lot of pediatric concussion in the office and help treat them for various problems but most of the time it's a headache and visual problems and schoolwork that are challenging them the most and a lot of times Parents come to me and they're just wondering like how this didn't get diagnosed um, in other settings. And really the big reason that it's not getting diagnosed as much is because not a lot of healthcare practitioners know a lot about concussion. And we as a healthcare industry have not known a lot about concussion you know, for the past, uh, let's say like 50 years or so. Um, it's really become very top of mind, very relevant in the last you know, decade or so and one of the things that you have to take into account is when you get a concussion imaging will not show any difference so you can have normal brain MRIs normal brain CTs when you have a concussion and the diagnosis of a concussion has to be made by the clinical presentation the history you know what do they look like bedside how can they function with their eyes their balance things like that and then how do they feel do they have headaches do they have dizziness they have short-term memory loss, things like that. And so one of the reasons I want to do this video is explain kind of the mechanism of injury so it kind of makes sense why it wouldn't show up on an MRI. And to do that, I'm going to draw a, a picture here. And basically, you have the brain sitting inside the skull here. Okay, and then the brain is made up of a very soft, well, very soft, um, jello-like, if you will, substance. But the brain stem right here is actually like a balsa wood, if you will. It's a, it's a soft wood, but it is harder than the brain. This region right here, the brain stem, is harder than the brain. And when you get a concussion, what happens, let's say if it's impact this way, so the head moves in this direction, and the skull hits here, and then a lot of times you get a counter coup, so it's going to hit here too. It's going to go forward and back. What happens is a lot of the cranial nerves that sit in this brain stem right here, ones that are responsible for eye movements, ones that are responsible for your neck and shoulder movements, ones that are responsible for your actual vision, smell, taste, they all come from this brainstem region. But what's really common is that nerves coming out of the brainstem at this level right here, going to all the different areas that I just discussed, they get stretched. And this stretching doesn't show up on an MRI because it's like taking a rubber band and just kind of stretching it to where it doesn't really change the presentation on an MRI. And this is called diffuse axonal shearing. And this is what leads to a lot of the issues that concussion patients have but will not show up on an MRI. And so that's what I wanted to cover today.